in addition to setting up the keyframes explicitly by setting the, the time to particular keyframe and, and position the object for the animation, uh, there is also sort of a direct manipulation way of doing it. Then you can simply draw the animation pad into the scene uh, in full perspective, uh, no control point by control point, and then you can display the pad. And not only you can do that, you can also, for example, align the axis of this object to follow the path. Now we can press play, you can see that the, the, the light cycle is not only moving along the path, it's actually following it as the real vehicle would. Now we can open a C friend, uh, scene editor, which will display the individual keyframes which we have been created manually. And you notice that you are there, they are spaced equal distantly because that's how we draw them, but we can manipulate this path directly. Or we can select individual keyframes inside the scene editor, and there we can move them that way. We can also drag time frame in a scene editor, which is really a very powerful tool. And let's say in the keyframe 80, we will scale the tricycle down. It will immediately create a keyframe. And uh, in frame 100, we can scale it up. Another keyframe, you can see it better. They are kind of on the bottom of the of the view in here. And we can preview immediately. The animation will be correctly previewed with the scale down. Not only we can see track view, we can also see function curve view, which is a way the animators like to see that it really is equivalent to the direct path, but it is separated into three components, X, Y, and Z. And animators very much prefer to use this view uh, to kind of coordinate uh, the things together. And you, if you had more animated objects, you could superimpose these function curves to coordinate the objects very precisely. Um, in addition to a simple keyframe type of animation, we can combine uh, this, this existing animation with other forms of animation, such as a physics-generated animation. Uh, we will load a little, little donut, and we'll give it physical attribute, and we'll see as it bounces off in a scene, that it will bounce off of the animated keyframed object, which is really, really nice. Of course, the, the keyframe object will not change its position. So if we start the simulation, we'll see it's already bouncing off there, and the simulation actually slows down because more computation to do, but if we get stuff just right and we record these keyframes, because simulation is being recorded, then we get the almost real time replay, which is very smooth and, uh, and, and in fact real time. And you can notice that in a track view, then we can see that we have generated two types of keyframes. On the top, you see physics keyframes, at the bottom, you see the old style regular keyframes.